Hey guys, this is Noah with SparkSight. I'm here today to show you some tips and tricks that I use in Adobe After Effects to speed up my animation workflow. Um, there's a couple of things I've discovered that have really helped me with animating multiple things in succession that I really want to share with you guys. So here today, what I'm going to be showing you is this really cool way of animating uh, cascades, basically where you have multiple objects animating one after another. Um, and they each follow what the one before does. So you might be wondering, how is it that you can set something like this up? Well, it uses a lot of what are called expressions, which is essentially just like a dumbed down version of JavaScript that's used inside of After Effects. This allows you to manipulate a lot of parameters that you aren't otherwise normally able to. This particular expression that's being used here is called value at time. It's a very simple one, and it opens up a huge door of possibility. So to get started, I'm going to go ahead and create a new composition just to demo this and call it something like animation cascade. Um, and then for the purposes of this, I'm going to create a shape layer um, and just have it be a single line that goes across the screen. A blue is fine, doesn't really matter. Then I will open up the um, contents of the shape layer and go down into the shape that we just created and create something called a trim path. This is an animation preset that already exists inside of After Effects. Um, you just click on the little add button here and add trim path. Uh, this allows us to, by messing with this end parameter, uh, this allows you to cull the line off and then bring it back on. So we'll start with end at 0%, um, click the stopwatch to start uh, animating it, move ahead like maybe a second or so, and then bring it to 100%. This allows us to do a very simple animate on of this line. Then I'm going to take these keyframes just because I can't have keyframes that uh, aren't smooth, add an easy ease to them, jump into the graph editor, and pinch the speed lines a little bit here so that it just looks smoother. It's not necessary for this, but I, I had to. Then we duplicate the shape layer hit U on the keyboard to bring up all the keyframed attributes. And we can just get rid of the keyframes here because we won't need them on the second layer. But what we do need to do is hold down Alt on the keyboard and then click on the stopwatch. This brings up the expressions editor and allows us to do all the different things that we're going to do here. But all we need to do at this moment is take this, make sure it's all highlighted, and then click here. It, this is called the pick whip. This allows you to quickly reference other parts of your composition in the expressions that you're editing. In this case, we're going to go down to the end parameter on the trim paths of the first layer and release. And so now, all this does, this a bunch of this stuff here, is says go to this layer, go to this parameter, and look at what it currently is, which means that if I uh, just move this out of the way, you'll see that these two layers are doing exactly the same thing. So this is where we're going to bring in the dot value at time expression. So all you have to do to get started is click here into the expression editor, and on the end of this, add dot value at time. What this expression does is say, yes, I want to use the value from this parameter down here, what we've already referenced, but I want you to use it at this specific time. So if I just add, let's say, 1 here and then click out, it's going to use the value of this uh, end parameter on the trim path at one second. So if I move this out of the way, for example, you'll be able to see that even though this one is animating, this top one is locked in time at one second. So that's not exactly what we want. Uh, another thing you can stick in here is just the word time. Time is just a global variable in After Effects that references the current time in seconds. So if I release that, it's essentially just the same as not having it there at all. It's use the current value at the current time, which is what we were doing before. But if we add on one little thing, we can make this much more interesting. Time minus, let's say, uh, one. So now it'll be using the current time minus one second. So it'll be behind one second. And that's what it's doing. So pretty awesome. And that on its own can be used in a number of different ways. But I like to take this and make it a bit more automated so that it can be um, sort of duplicated and used in a bunch of different interesting ways. Uh, the first thing I like to do is go to whatever our first initial master layer is and add something called a slider control. So this is an effect that you can add onto it. If you get onto effect expression controls slider control. So this is basically just like an empty effect. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't transform the image in any way. All it does is hold a value that can be referenced by expressions. So the way we bring this, this slider control into the picture here uh, is by setting a new variable inside of this uh, 
expression that we've created called delay, and then pick whipping uh, to that slider controller. And you got whenever you set a variable, you usually have to close it with a semicolon so that it doesn't confuse After Effects. So if I click out now, nothing's changed because all we've done is set a variable. But if I go over here where the number one is in one second uh, and change that to the word delay, um, then it will now, well, it's not going to do anything because this is still set to zero. But if I make this slider controller five, for example, it'll now be um, five seconds behind. Yeah. Um, now, the reason I did it this way with writing delay up here and then writing it again down here uh, is because that allowed me to have it not just be one big mess of expressions in one long line. It can get very confusing. My preference with setting this up is not to use seconds, but to use frames because usually the delays are much closer together and sometimes it's hard to visualize 0.3 seconds. Uh, instead, I like to have this number be a number in frames. So what I'll do over here is add one more little expression called frames to time. And this is going to open a set of parentheses, and I want to open it there and close it over here. And this just converts the number from frames into seconds. So now we're actually talking about five frames, not five seconds. So the cascade happens much faster. So now we're going somewhere. So the last thing we need to do on this expression is change this thing here from shape layer one, because currently it's referencing specifically this one layer called shape layer one. And we don't want that. We want it to be instead always looking at the layer below it. Uh, and the best way to do that in After Effects is with this little uh, term index plus one. Index is just the current uh, value of the layer that you're on right now. In that case, it's this number right here, which is one. If I had just put two, it would be the same as referring to shape layer one. What we want to do is index plus one. So no matter how many times we duplicate this layer, it's always going to be saying, look at the layer below the current layer. Um, then if we duplicate this and offset it a little bit and duplicate it and offset that a little bit, you'll notice that all of them closely follow at exactly the right, uh, exactly the same amount, the layer uh, directly beneath it. Um, and so then if we take the slider control and maybe make this 10 seconds, now it's going to make the, the delay between each one uh, well, 10 frames now. So I hope you're kind of seeing the possibility that comes with this expression and all the different ways that it could be used. Um, just as another example and, and something you may not have thought of is I went ahead and went through and applied the same set of expressions to the start parameter as well as the end one. So now it animates on and animates off. And the only difference here is that instead of it referencing uh, the end parameter. It's exactly the same expression. You can just copy and paste it. This one references the start parameter. So in summary, what we've been able to do here is use the value at time expression to control multiple shapes so that they animate one after another in a way that's easily controllable and manipulatable, I guess that's a word, after the fact. So for me, this is really valuable if a client comes back and is like, hey, I want these things to maybe animate on a little bit slower. Instead of having to take the time to go through and adjust all the keyframes and realign all the staircase little things of animations happening one after another, in this case, all I have to do here is go, oh, you want it to be delayed a little bit longer? Well, let me just increase the delay parameter, and now they all animate on a little bit slower one after another. Um, this is really useful for things like explosion animations, um, where you have shock waves and other things coming on one after another, because uh, in this case you could quickly maybe make that five, um, compress these keyframes together, and now it's just immediately more energetic. It's maybe something else like this, uh, a sort of cascade of boxes bouncing one after another, so that's just the single box on its own, then you could have all of them bouncing around like that. Uh, even using other expressions like uh, the inertial bouncing expression that uh, is really awesome uh, and that I'll include in the description as well. Um, you could have this being controlled and then you could have all these other boxes doing the exact same bouncing animation and all you would have to do to adjust all of them is change these parameters right here. This is all that you have. Yeah, okay, so I hope you found this tutorial helpful, and I realize that with expressions being involved, a lot of the times it can be confusing uh, and kind of overwhelming. So if, this, if you have any questions of any kind, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll definitely reach out and make sure that everyone kind of understands and grasps what's going on here. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you want to learn more, please subscribe to SparkSight, where we make video easy. Thank you.